My name is Raven Payne and I'm currently pursuing a degree to fulfill my lifelong dream of becoming a teacher. For as long as I can remember, I've always dreamed of being an elementary school teacher and having my own classroom. A huge part of who I am is how I was raised and how the things I learned will contribute to my teaching career. I believe that students should be taught life lessons and experiences that aren't typically taught in the classroom. Growing up, I was raised in a family that taught me how to be self-sufficient. I was fortunate enough to be taught how to grow and cook my own food. I learned about ways to help the environment, like composting and recycling, and I was shown the process of making maple syrup in our great state of Vermont. I always knew that when I had my own classroom, I wanted to teach my students life skills that will allow them to succeed in life beyond the classroom. I feel like students are sometimes just taught academics in school and not lessons that will help them once they are done school. I believe that every kid should be taught life lessons that will help them to be successful once they are out of school. Similar to what Brian Schultz talks about in his article, Spectacular Things Happen Along the Way, I believe that oftentimes it is in the best interest of the particular class to develop your own curriculum in the classroom. Schultz, along with his students, developed a curriculum that encourages students' growth and nurtures individual development. Using Schultz's ideas, my students and I would be able to develop different units in their curriculum that would also allow them to learn about growing and preparing their own food, how to plant flowers and trees, and how to recycle and compost. Something that really interests me about the field of education is being able to be there for a student and make them being in your class the best part of their day. I believe that I can be there for a student by doing things like keeping snacks in the classroom for students who may not have had breakfast, or keeping an extra coat in the classroom to give a student that has only had a sweatshirt. I want to be there for my students in any way that I can. An article that I really connected with was Classroom as a Community by Stephen Walk. What I like the most from this article is that Walk describes a classroom as a living ecosystem with seemingly infinite number of variables that can help us appreciate and respect its complexity and uniqueness. I believe that each classroom is a unique environment with a unique set of variables. As a teacher, I believe that if the students in your classroom have cohesion and work together like an ecosystem, then it will benefit everyone. Another concept that I really liked was Walk's idea of a thoughtful life. The idea of a thoughtful life is to devote part of a wall in your classroom where you hang up different phrases or words that you want to be present in your classroom. I believe that if you have qualities that you want to be present in your classroom, having them displayed somewhere in the room will greatly influence those ideas to actually happen. I have always been interested in how a student's socioeconomic status affects them in the classroom. I believe that every student should have equal opportunity in the classroom no matter what background they come from. I believe that students are often judged by their peers and teachers if they have a low socioeconomic status. I believe that teachers are there to teach the students regardless if they wear the same clothes every day or if they wear designer fashion. Socioeconomic status has a big impact on the effects of student learning. In the reading, How Social Context Support and Shape Language Development by Erica Hoff, you see the different ways that students are affected because of their socioeconomic status. The biggest difference between students with high socioeconomic status and low socioeconomic status is their language environment and their language development. It is shown that high SES mothers talk more to their children than low SES mothers. Hoff also talked about a large-scale comparison between the in-home conversation and the differences between low SES families, mid SES families, and high SES families. This study showed that families with a child under two years old suggested that over the course of one week, children of high SES parents hear 215,000 words, children of middle SES parents hear 125,000 words, and children of lower SES parents who are on public assistance hear 62,000 words. I believe that I relate best with progressivism and the ideas of John Dewey. John Dewey saw education as an opportunity to learn how to apply previous experiences in new ways and that people learn best through social interaction in the real world. I believe in his ideas that students should be taught life experiences in the real world. I also believe that students would be able to learn better if their curriculum was built around the experiences, interests, and abilities of the students. I also believe that teachers should not be focused on just teaching to the test. I also agree with the concept of having a student's studies be integrated with several subjects instead of just being taught one idea or concept at a time. During my senior year of high school, I began to help out at a local elementary school in the classroom and the physical education classes. In the classroom, I would often read to the students in small groups, help with math problems, or with general projects that they were working on. In the PE classes, I helped the teachers set up different games and activities for the students, and I sometimes came up with my own games to teach the kids how to play. I still continue to help out with this teacher in their PE classes at this school and in another school. Another way that I am civically engaged is helping out with the Vermont Association of Snow Travelers. I go out on the trails during the fall and put up all the signs that are needed for the upcoming season. This allows the snowmobilers to stay on the trail and see where they are going. I put up stop signs, warning signs, and reflectors that can be seen at night. I also go back during the spring time and collect all the signs to preserve them for the following years. Each student deserves the right to learn and be taught life experiences. I want to use the life lessons that I have been taught in my classroom to teach my students different important lessons that they will use in their real life. 
I also want to create an environment that makes each student feel welcome and included. I hope that when I become a teacher, I can use the articles that I have read and the lessons that I have been taught to be able to provide for my students in a way that will allow them to reach their full potential. My goal once I become a teacher is to have my students enjoy being in the classroom and enjoy the different things that they are learning.